This video series would not have been possible without dedicated research by an individual that will be known only as JK. You know who you are. Thank you. With the quarantine in full effect here, I thought I'd give you all a brain dump on the Alton helmet and its extended family. In this multi-series video, I'm going to go over the famous and quite heavy Russian helmets that were used by their counter-terrorism units. Special attention will be given to the Alton helmet as it is the most famous of the bunch and I happen to have one in my possession. It must be said that the genesis of these tough metal helmets does not begin from welding masks. Obvious myth out of the way. You might be surprised to find that the first designs were not developed by the Russian Institute of Steel, known as Nistali. On the contrary, the first titanium helmets were designed and produced by a Swiss firm known as Tig Bicord. In 1977, this company produced a helmet known as the PSH-77, colloquially known as the Tig helmet. During this time, the fledgling GSG-9 German counterterrorism team have been looking to replace their obsolete M31 Springer helms. If these look familiar, it's because these helmets basically were the same helmet used by Fallschirmjägers in World War II. As such, GSG-9 became TIG's first customers, and I find it likely, though I can't prove, that this TIG helmet was designed specifically due to a request by GSG-9. Many of these helmets are also produced in Germany by Garant Schutztechnik. There's also a similar, but lighter helmet produced by Ubrix in Austria. Probably due to the neutrality of the Swiss and the Austrians, the sale of these helmets was not limited to Western nations, as Yugoslavia and East Germany purchased helmets for their counterterrorism and police forces. Yugoslavia bought helmets for their SAJ anti-terrorist teams, specifically for the Sarajevo Olympic Games, and some saw use during the Yugoslav War. East German helmets also seen here in Dizenheit 9 use. I also found this interesting example of Turkish gendarme, also equipped with the helmet. But I'm dancing around the big red elephant in the room. The Soviet Union also acquired several of these helmets, immediately trialing them as early as a year after the PSH-77's release. These helmets were quickly issued to the Soviet Union's KGB Alpha and Vimple teams, just in time for Operation Storm 333, where the KGB direct action teams, supported by Gru's Muslim battalion, attacked Afghanistan's Tajbeg Palace, assassinating the president, and killing hundreds of Afghan National Army soldiers and palace guard. And so the TIG received its baptism of fire at the start of the Soviet-Afghan War. And though the Soviet Union hadn't developed the first titanium helmet, it became the most prolific users of them. Naturally, many of these helmets were also delivered to Nistali for evaluation. Being a superpower rich in titanium, it didn't take too long for an indigenous design to appear. And in 1984, a new, completely Russian helmet was made. Coined the Alton after the Renaissance era Russian currency, this helmet was put into service as a direct replacement for TIG helmets. According to Russia, the 4mm of titanium provides even more protection than the original TIG, even though both weigh about the same, around 3.8 kilograms about the visor. The Alton can confidently stop every pistol round in existence, and I've seen reports of it deflecting 545 rifle rounds. Officially, the helmet isn't really rated for rifle rounds, but the round angles and hard material seem to make ricochets more likely. Later versions of the Alton drop a millimeter of the titanium for an air mid layer. At a glance, you can tell the Alton apart from the TIG by the visor. Some late versions of the Alton also have a rounded top edge visor, known to the Russians specifically as a humpback. There's also these more narrow versions of the visor. Alton helmets come standard with a communications headset, unlike TIGs that don't always use them. The radio port in the back of early versions has 19 pins as opposed to the later types that have 7 pin connectors. The 19 pin Altons use these low profile angstrom radios, while the radios that these 7 pin Altons use are Marantz standard radios, and lastly the Vertex VX900 radios. This Vertex is the last and most modern radio to be used by the Alton, and if you happen to find one, send me an email at bbgunbb at gmail.com and I can help you program these radios. Several variants of the Alton helmet were created and put into use from the mid-1980s onward. It was used by the FSB teams during the 1993 constitutional crisis, where Alpha and Vimple stormed the Russian parliament building. The Alton was also the primary helmet used during the Nordo siege and the Beslan school hostage crisis, 20 years after its initial inception. These days, Alton helmets and their progeny, though obsolete, still make sporadic appearances in Rusgard and regional FSB teams. 
Titanium helmets, unlike airmid, Kevlar, and ceramic types, tend to maintain their ballistic qualities for a significantly longer period of time. Personally, I find the Alton to be a very comfortable helmet with the visor detached. The headset speaker is quite loud, and even when guns are firing, I can clearly hear radio transmissions. My visor is not the one that was built with my helmet, and doesn't entirely fit to spec. Because of this, I've had to reverse one of the brackets in order for the visor to lock in properly. With the visor attached, the Alton becomes an unbalanced, heavy, and uncomfortable mess. It's difficult to aim properly and shoulder your rifle without special visor stocks. But if you're breaching a building, that extra protection you get obviously makes a difference. I can feel a psychological boost with the visor down, and that mental buff might give me just enough confidence to make entry. Thus concludes chapter 1 of this video series. The long and colorful history of these two starting helmets really dwarfs everything else. In chapter 2, we'll talk about the Alton's extended family of helmets, including the K6, Lynx, Masca, ZSH, DT, Kiver, Vityaz S, and Vulcan. I have a strong desire to test the protection level of these helmets, and with enough Patreon donations from viewers like you, I plan to purchase a few of the aforementioned helmets and do some penetration testing in a future chapter of this series. Thank you, and goodbye.